Hey y'all, I wanted to film a little bit of a different type of video today. We just installed a NAS or a network attached storage device here in our church and we're using it to store our live streams and all sorts of other things on it. And I wanted to kind of give you guys a quick run through of that as well as um, maybe why you should install one yourself. I figured I'd do this a little bit of a vlog style because it's over here in our server room and thought this might be a fun way to look at it. So first of all, what is a NAS? So again, like I said, it stands for network attached storage, which basically just means it kind of acts like a giant hard drive on your network that you can talk to as long as you're on the same network as the NAS. This means that you don't need to use a bunch of portable SSDs or hard drives in order to store your media or transfer it between people. Instead, as long as you're on the same network, you can actually access all of the files that are stored on there. Also, this is my first time vlogging and my arm is getting tired already, so not for the week apparently. Now a NAS is a lot more than a storage server. You can also run all sorts of different software on it. So things like Plex or an email server or storing your security camera footage. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. The sky is kind of the limit. Now us personally, I don't know that we're gonna do much with it other than just like a basic storage server, but it's good to know that that's an option. So why would you use this versus just using hard drives? Well, one, you don't have to keep track of all of the portable hard drives and make sure that they don't go missing and grow some legs and walk away. You also don't have to know who has it to be like, hey, I need this file and um, Joe has that and he's at his house. Speaking of your house, you can actually access your NAS from your home, as long as you set up your network correctly and allow people to do that, if that's something that you need. It also allows for redundancy. So for example, in the way that we have ours set up right now, we can actually lose one hard drive, have it die completely, and we won't lose any data. Whereas if you're just using a standalone SSD, if that dies, you lose everything that's on it. Like it's just gone. We also have the ability to create snapshots of our data. So if somebody deletes the data that was on the drive, um, that's not really a big deal because we're creating snapshots a couple times a day. So as long as that data was ever there, we can actually recover it and not be out of luck. It's not easily stolen. You know, it's pretty easy for somebody to just pocket an SSD that was left sitting on a counter. Um, a NAS is quite a bit bigger, so not easily just pick up and walk away with it. You're also able to set up just kind of better storage patterns and stuff with it. If any of you have had an SSD kind of fill up and delete a bunch of data over and over again, a lot of times there's a lot of stuff left on it if people aren't cleaning it up correctly which means it can fill up with space and then people end up reformatting it. And a lot of times things end up just very poorly organized on it because of that, because it's constantly changing. With a NAS, having one central spot that everything is stored, you're able to set up really clear storage patterns so that you always know where everything is. And finally, honestly, just the price for the actual storage. It's a little bit more of an upfront cost, but when you look at the price per terabyte of the storage, it blows an SSD out of the water. For example, an SSD right now, if we look at one online, a pretty common one, the Samsung T7, is about $90 per terabyte. That's pretty expensive when you compare it to our NAS right now, which we're looking at closer to $30 a terabyte. That's about three times cheaper. And when you're talking about tons and tons of storage, that'll add up really quick. Okay, so that's enough of me talking in a closet without showing you anything. So let's go ahead and check out the NAS and where we have it set up and kind of what we're working with as far as hardware goes. So here it is. Um, it is the Synology DS1522 Plus. It has support for five hard drives on it, as well as some expandable M.2 slots. So you can put in some SSDs and expandable RAM if you need some more memory. It also has a few network ports on it, as well as some USB ports. So there's a USB port right there on the front. You can actually plug in an SSD directly to it if you need to transfer things between the NAS and an external hard drive. Currently, we have it set up just in our server room, which is not very well organized, and it's plugged into a network switch that we have set up over here. Again, ignore the hanging cables. Um, it's never been super clean in here, and this is pretty new for us. Right now, we actually have it set up with two 14 terabyte hard drives. Between the hard drives and the NAS itself, we spent about $1,100 for this. And again, I mentioned redundancy. So we technically only have about 14 terabytes of usable space right now because they're set up in a redundant fashion. So if one of them dies, we don't lose anything. We will need to replace the drive that died, but we have peace of mind knowing that we don't lose any of our data in the instance that that happens. Now, if we were to fill this up with all five drives, that would give us about 56 terabytes of usable space for about $1,700, which comes out to about $30 per terabyte. Again, about three times cheaper than the equivalent if you just bought portable SSDs. Now, this is with us specifically using these 14 terabyte hard drives. You could buy bigger or smaller ones if they fit your need, but I think this is about the sweet spot as far as like price per storage amount for us. Now, this is a Synology unit that also supports up to two of their expansion chassis, and each one of those expansion chassis can hold five more drives. So if we were to do that, buy some of those, buy more drives and fill everything up, 
we could have 15 total drives, which totally filled out would be about 196 terabytes of storage for $4,700, which comes out to $23 per terabyte. Again, I know almost $5,000 is a lot of money, but when you're looking at $23 per terabyte of storage, like that's crazy. You can have so much storage and it'll last you forever with the peace of mind that you're not gonna lose any storage because you have redundant drives set up and you can access it from anywhere. So speaking of accessing it from anywhere, I'll show a quick clip here of how we actually access it on our computers. It shows up if we're just on the network as a network share and as long as we have an account, we can connect right into it just like any other folder. Then we can move stuff around, copy things to our local computer or do whatever it is we need to do. When we're at home, all we need to do is connect to the VPN that we have set up and then type in the IP address of the server and same thing, it shows up in Finder and we can navigate it like any other folder could. This is a little bit more complex to set up, but honestly, we followed some videos to do it and it's really not that crazy if you have some technical know-how. Now, it's definitely not gonna be as fast as using a portable SSD. So when you're talking about large video files, if you're just sharing them from one person to another, it still might make sense to just put it on a hard drive and send it over. But when we're talking about long-term storage, it definitely makes sense to put it over here on the NAS. So transfer speeds, when we're on Wi-Fi, we get about 24 megabytes per second. But if we plug into a hardwired ethernet port, we get about four times that, closer to 100 megabytes per second. So if we're transferring smaller documents or pictures, it's not too bad to be on Wi-Fi, but if we're doing videos, you really need to be on ethernet. And like I said before, we can actually plug an SSD directly into it. So if we have a lot of large files that we need to transfer to or from the NAS, we can just plug that in and do it that way. We have seriously loved having this so far. It's only been a couple of weeks, but we can just store everything that we need to on here and know that anyone can get to it whenever they need to. This isn't just live stream. It's also any other videos that we produce, pictures that we take, media, graphic assets that we need to share amongst people. I can't tell you how many times I've had to email someone and say, hey, can you send me this new graphic? Whereas now, I'll know exactly where it is on our shared storage. If you want to set one of these up yourself, I'm not going to go through exactly how to do it, but it is pretty straightforward and there's a ton of tutorials out there. The one that I followed was specifically by SpaceRex. He's a YouTuber who has all kinds of content about NASA's specifically, as well as all other types of networking things. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description and the specific video that I watched. It was awesome and really only took me a couple hours to set up. And it was a lot of just following along, clicking check boxes and filling out really easy fields. Now we went with Synology. You definitely don't have to use Synology. There's lots of brands out there that make NASA's. Just make sure that it's something that you think will be around for the long haul. You don't wanna go with some no-name brand and then they stop supporting it in two years. You could also build your own as a DIY. It's really just a computer with a bunch of hard drives. I thought about doing that because I'm pretty techie, but honestly, I didn't want to have to support it. Synology is pretty standard and has lots of documentation online, so if I ever leave, someone else can do it. Honestly, my biggest complaint is that we didn't do this sooner. I think this is a great investment and totally worth it. And again, you don't even have to fill up all the drives at first. Right now, we've only got a couple and we'll fill them up as we need it. It's gonna speed up our workflows and just make everything so much easier as far as storing video and editing things on the go, which makes us more efficient and able to do our job as church leaders more effectively. Until next time.